Welcome back everyone. Hi, if you're new, I'm Tori and today I'm finally going to be sharing with you my fall book recommendations. I have so many books here that I just think are perfect for this time of year, whether they're atmospheric or feature monsters or vampires or books that I just associate with this time of year because that's just when I read them. It's when I love curling up with them the most. I think it is such a great stack here. We got some tried and true favorites that I have recommended in the past, but also some new books that I have read in 2024 that definitely deserve to be on your fall TBR. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know what you're going to be reading this fall. Hopefully it's some of these. And if you have read them, I would love to hear your thoughts on them. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into the video. First, start things off here with The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapkowski. This is the prequel, one of the prequel uh, short story collections in the Witcher series. I'm still making my way through the Witcher series, you guys. I'm on Baptism of Fire and I am going to finish Baptism of Fire before 2024 is over. So Witcher journey is still going well. But if you're someone who maybe loves the video games or you have watched the TV show and you've enjoyed it and you want to try to get into the book series, this is definitely, I think, the perfect read to be picking up for the fall. So if you guys are unfamiliar with the Witcher and the world of this series, we have our main character, Geralt of Rivia, and he is a monster hunter. And so this first short story collection in particular, I think is so perfect for this time of year because we're just following Geralt on his adventures um, as a monster hunter and just some of the big battles that he's had. So yeah, we've got some good battles in this, a really memorable cast of characters and some epic skill world building that's starting to unfold in this first collection. I love the world of The Witcher. I will admit though, I do think my feelings, you know, on the book series are a little bit colored by The Witcher Wild Hunt, the video game, because I just love the games so much and that was my introduction into the world of The Witcher. So I do come from the video games, but I don't know, there's just something about this series, there's something about this cast of characters. Yennefer in particular is just one of my favorite uh, characters, favorite female characters of all time. So yeah, I just love this world, these characters, and working my way through the series thus far. And if you wanna get started on your Witcher journey too, you definitely need to start here. And then next up, I have one of my favorite reads of 2024 here. I feel like this one just, screams fall because of the atmosphere the world building the setting itself best book of the year so far for me and that is the will of the many by james islington i am just obsessed with the will of the many i cannot wait for the sequel strength of the few to be released in 2025 i just love this book i love the way it unfolds i love the way james islington goes about the world building and how we just slowly start getting more immersed in that and like different elements of the world building and the magic in this the journey of reading this book is so good and engaging but really it's the ending of this particularly the very last page of this book that just feels like it brings, not brings the story together because this is still the first book in a series, but it just creates a completely different outlook on what you've read in this first book. And it's so good. You're gonna get sick of me talking about it because it is gonna make a couple of more appearances as we start getting into the end of the year video. So our main character in this is this, and he ends up going to this academy, but he does it in a way where he's trying to you know, find out secrets on behalf of someone else. And in the process of that, he gets roped up into all of the conspiracies and the politics of the Academy, but just the Republic as a whole. And this himself comes from a place in this world that was one of the last places to be conquered by the Katzenin Republic. And it is so good. And just even the journey through this, there were some really great surprises that had me a little speechless. So I cannot wait. Strength of the Few is top top priority when it releases in 2025. One of my most anticipated releases, hands down, for next year. And then next up, I have The Dead Cat Tell Assassins by P. Jelly Clark. This is his most recent release. It just came out in August, and it was so good. I actually buddy read this with one of my book friends, Shannon from That's So Poe. And sadly, she's not making videos uh, on BookTube anymore, but I'm still gonna leave a link down below for her channel because all of her past videos are just great. I've always loved Shannon's reviews and the way that she speaks about books, so definitely still go check out her channel. But I had such a Great time reading this with her. P. Jelly Clark is one of my autobi authors. I love his work. Ring Shot in particular is one of my favorite reads. And this novella I think was a really nice detour from some of the stuff that he's done in the past. This is definitely a little bit lighter and more fun than some of his previous works but it is still so good it was unexpectedly funny and i'm not a big fan of humor in my fantasy and sci-fi books but i just really had a blast with this we have our main character in this avine and she is undead but don't call her a zombie and avine is part of a guild where they you know give out contracts for them to go go kill somebody but one of the hard rules of this guild is that once you accept the contract you have to go carry out that kill no matter what and so that's where our story really kicks in avine accepts her contract 
and she goes to carry it out but once she gets there she just gets a really huge uh, just unexpected surprise and we go from there. This unfolds over the course of one night. We just go to some really interesting locations. There's some great atmospheric moments and one character in particular, their appearance was a little terrifying. So there's definitely that horror element uh, to this fantasy novella as well. You can definitely tell that Clark had fun writing this and even though it does have a bit of a lighter tone than something like Ring Shout or A Master of Jinn or any of the other books in the Dead Jinn universe, he still has his strong storytelling hand, his world building and his great characterizations are still in play in this book and I just had such a fantastic time reading this. I think it's perfect for this season. So if you have not done so already, definitely put this on your TBR. Highly, highly recommend Dead Cat Tell Assassins. And then another one that deserves to be on your fall TBR is a recent read that I just finished and that is Asunder by Kirsten Hall. And this is by far one of the best recommendations that I've gotten in 2024. This was so good. There came a point around the middle of this book where I was genuinely impressed with what I was reading and how the story was unfolding. I love this. I love the world of this. It is so weird. And this is the kind of book where you really just have to go along with what's happening because very little is being explained. Like there's just, you could just be reading the weirdest thing. Like, oh, she's just pouring blood all over herself. It's just that kind of story where weird and dark things are happening. And while that's happening, you're trying to put together pieces of the world and its history and, you know, make sense of their gods and all of that. It's so, so good. So this one definitely gets that high recommendation because it is so dark and so atmospheric and just, odd in some places. There were parts that were just so weird and creepy that they kind of felt like a fever dream. So yeah, I loved everything about this. We have our main character in this, Karis, and she is what's known as a death speaker. And she can talk to people who've recently died. But the book kicks off when she is investigating this crime that has taken place. And she accidentally ends up binding, it's actually, it's so much more complicated than this, but she ends up binding another character, our other main character, Ferrain, to her shadow. And from there, the entire book is the two of them, you know, Karis and Ferrain, who's bound, trying to figure out how to unbind him. And in the process of this, we get a really interesting and dark journey for these two characters as they're going around to different places around this world. We get other characters that get roped up into the group as well that have really interesting backstories. So I loved this. I love Karis as a main character. She has a really dry and almost kind of cynical, like it is what it is, outlook on life. And <laughs> some of her uh, dialogue responses I thought were unexpectedly funny in this. I can't recommend this enough and thank you to the person who recommended it to me because this was amazing. And then next you guys, this actually feels really, I don't know, bittersweet maybe talking about this trilogy altogether. Uh, but let's talk about The Empire of the Wolf trilogy by Richard Swan. I want to say this is the first time I have ever talked about all three of them together now that this trilogy has been complete. I cannot say enough great things about the Empire of the Wolf trilogy, you guys. This, when the third book, The Trials of Empire, came out at the beginning of this year, this trilogy was solidified as one of my just all-time favorite series. It is so incredible. The first book is The Justice of Kings. Book two is The Tyranny of Faith. And again, like I mentioned, the third book, Trials of Empire, just came out. Uh, at the beginning of this year. I don't even know what to say about the Empire of the Wolf trilogy. Just read it. Not only is it, I think, perfect for this season because it is highly atmospheric, but once you start getting into these last two books, like end of book two and all of book three, this is just a straight up horror fantasy series. There are some wild things happening over the course of this trilogy. And there's also a continuation series that is starting in 2025 that I'm so excited for. Grave Empire comes out in February and that is going to take place many years after the events of this uh, of this trilogy with new characters, new problems, all of that. If you guys are unfamiliar with this trilogy, we actually have two main characters that we're following. One of them is Von Vault and he is a justice on behalf of the Empire and our other main character Helena works under Von Vault and Helena is the one that is telling this entire story in her own words from Justice all the way through the Trials of Empire. And the whole trilogy is Helena recounting basically how the Empire of the Wolf came to its end and how Helena and Von Vault had a hand in that and how dark religious motivations came into play and how like horror elements were involved in all of that. It is, this is something special. I love Empire of the Wolf. I love talking about this trilogy. And there is just something so amazing now about being able to talk about all three of them together. So if you're looking to dive into something this fall that is just 
so atmospheric, but also juggles some great themes of religion and horror and justice and morality and all of that and just kind of wraps it all up in these great fantasy and horror elements. This is definitely a trilogy that needs to be on your TBR. One of my favorites, please go read it perfect for this time of year. And then next up I have a book here that I haven't talked about in a while, at least I don't think I have, um, but I love this so much. I think more people need to read this and that is The Changeling by Victor Lavelle. This also has an adaptation on Apple TV. I haven't finished the season yet but I have heard really good things about it as a whole. In this we have our main character Apollo. It takes place in New York City and Apollo is a father and husband and one day Apollo's wife does something terrible and it takes their child and vanishes. And now the whole book is Apollo trying to navigate this really dark and weird uh, and horrific uh, New York City trying to find his wife and his child and I've said this in the past when recommending this book it reads like a really tripped out dark adult fairy tale at times I just love this so much I love Victor Lavelle's work uh, in general but this one is definitely my favorite of the books that I have read from him thus far and one that I will just always and forever continue to recommend because it is really that amazing so please go put this on your TBR if you have not done so it is an incredible work of fantasy a great blend of uh, some strong horror elements as well this is a must read I think for the season and then next up we have a book that I have also recommended in the past but I haven't talked about it in a while but it's so good and I'm currently reading the sequel right now but that is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. This is so chunky. <laughs> it is such a great fantasy horror vampire novel to sink into this time of year. I love this book and I was actually really surprised by how much I did enjoy this. We have our main character in this, um, I almost said Gerald. Uh, we have our main character in this, Gabriel, and he is half human, half vampire. And this book actually begins with Gabriel being held captive. He's the last member of his brotherhood called the Silver Saints. And from there, this entire book is, I almost said Gerald again, the entire book is Gabriel telling his story. It's not like the entire story of his life because it does begin at a very specific point in time when he's a little bit older, um, but it, he's telling his entire story to the vampire that's holding him captive. And I really was just impressed by the structure of this book. I think that's what initially drew me into this. I think this is such a strong fantasy and vampire story. Just from a writing standpoint, I really love how the story flows and there's always just this smooth transition between, you know, past and the present storyline of Gabriel being held captive. Yeah, I love Empire of the Vampire. I think this is just naturally perfect for the season because of the content. And then the rest of these are all books that I have talked about in the past, have recommended, but we got a lot of new people here since I've talked about these books and they definitely deserve to keep being talked about and keep being recommended. The next up is The Scourge Between Stars by Ness Brown. This is such a great sci-fi horror novella and one that really grew on me over the course of 2023. But in this we have this starship that left this failed colony and now they are trying to go back to Earth. And our main character Jacqueline is the interim captain on this ship and she is just trying to get her people back down to earth safely you know just have a really smooth voyage but she is just stressed out she also suffers from anxiety which I thought was portrayed really well in this and again she's just trying to keep the peace and keep things rolling until the starship can make it back to earth but of course on this journey everything goes wrong and this alien terror begins wreaking havoc on the ship on its people and poor Jacqueline is now even more stressed out. This is such a great sci-fi horror novella and I've said this in the past that if you've played the video game Prey, I think this is really great just in terms of similar vibes and atmosphere and all of that but also if you have seen the you know any of the Alien movies or really like that Alien franchise, pick this up. This is another good sci-fi horror for your TBR and something else that I think is so great for this season. Next let's get into another one of my favorite vampire stories that I feel like I haven't mentioned in a while more people need to read this. It's Certain Dark Things by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is absolutely fantastic. I love this. Moreno Garcia, she's such a great writer. She writes so many different things, um, just different topics that she explores. But this one by far is my favorite. I just, I love it. It takes place in Mexico City and we do have, you know, some different POVs that we do rotate through over the course of this short book. But our main character is this vampire named Otto and she is trying to flee Mexico City because she has a history with one of the vampire clans there and she's also injured and so she is just trying to do everything she can to escape this clan 
and to get out of the city. But we also have our other main character, Domingo, in this, who is a human, and he is just so amazing. The loyalty that he has to Otto, he just wants to do something. He wants to be helpful. He wants to have a friend. And there's just so much tension in this. It's dark, it's atmospheric, and it's so short, but in this really short space, Moreno Garcia really manages to flesh out these characters and the world and give us some great vampire lore in the process. I love this. Please do yourself a favor, go pick this book up. It is incredible. And then next, I feel like I have not talked about this book. Actually, these last two, they were both in my best books of 2023 video. And I feel like I haven't really had a chance to talk about them since because they haven't been in any like recommendations videos this year, none of that. But the first one that I have here, we gotta bring it back, is The Helm of Midnight by Marina Lostetter. This is book one in the Five Penalties trilogy. The third and final book is coming out. Uh, January of 2025. This was one of my favorite reads of 2023. Absolutely incredible. One of my favorite blends of fantasy and horror and crime that I think I've ever read. It was so good. There's just so many intricate details when it comes to the lore of this world and the history and its religion and all of that. It's incredible. Kind of the basic very basic setup for this. We have this world where there are masks that can be imbued with the echo of someone who has previously died. So say you're like a doctor or a scientist and you want all of the knowledge that you have of this field to be passed on when you die. Your echo can be imbued in a mask and people can put on that mask and be flooded with all of the knowledge that you had while you were alive. And we have a group in this world called Regulators. Our main character is one of them and they regulate like the sale and trade of these masks but also you know investigate different crimes throughout the city as well. Our story actually starts when a mask that is imbued with the echo of a serial killer goes missing and over the course of the book people are turning up dead in the same way that you know people were found dead when the serial killer was alive this is so good you guys i'm obsessed with the helm of midnight i can't think of a better recommendation for this time of year i love it i love the world the magic the characters the creepiness the crime it is so incredible put this on your tbr right now and then last but certainly not least is a book that i have not been able to talk about since it made its appearance in my best books of 2023 video but it is one of my favorite fantasies and that is none other than the priory of the orange tree by Samantha Shannon. The Priory of the Orange Tree, in my opinion, is phenomenal. And I think this is so great for the fall, cooler weather, like just this time of year in general, because it is the perfect book, at least for me, because I read it when the weather got cooler. It is the perfect book to just curl up with. This is a story that I just lost myself in every single time I cracked the book open. With this book, I remember just being so blown away by the way that it was told. I love Samantha Shannon's storytelling style. It just feels very epic, very sweeping. It has a almost like traditional kind of fantasy feel to it and just truly epic world building and scale and characters and all of that. And I just love this. I love this book. I've gotten comments before when I've talked about Priory that, you know, people didn't really like it because the ending was just so rushed and just in general, the book was just really boring. But I do not feel that way at all. I mean, the ending, yes, I can see it is rushed, but I love the journey of this and I just love how involved and how detailed and sprawling the world and the characters are. It is just such a great book, you guys. If you still have not read Priory, please do yourself a favor and go pick this up. It is chunky for sure, but I promise you, it is well worth the read. This is incredible, incredible epic fantasy. And it's a standalone, technically a standalone. There is a prequel, Day of Fallen Night, which is on my shelf uh, up there that takes place, I believe, 500 years before the events of this book. But A Day of Fallen Night is also considered to be a uh, standalone as well. So Priory is just amazing. If you want something big and epic to curl up with in the fall, with your blanket and a hot cup of something, this, this is what you need. So that is it for me, you guys. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments. Again, if you've read any of these or what you plan to read this fall as the weather starts getting cooler. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.